So we're going to be issuing you with a new iPad and just want to take you through what you'll have um, initially. Uh, to start with, you'll have the iPad itself and you'll have this folio case, which incorporates a keyboard. You'll also have a charger. Now the charger, you just flip up and then it plugs into the wall and it gives you a USB type C output. This will be connected to this white cable like so, and then that plugs in via the Firewire cable into the bottom of the iPad, like so, and that will charge it. Charging the iPad will usually take, uh, with this charger, about five or six hours from zero all the way to fully charged, normally to 80% in just over an hour or so. Um, and then that uh, will last you easily through a day. So you only need an hour of charging to last you through a day with your new ones. Now for the keyboard, that also needs to be charged and it's charged by this port here. And we'll have a black cable, this black cable here, which uh, uh, plugs in with a normal USB um, adapter. So if you don't have a, a normal USB adapter, we'll need to find you, but you could also plug it into your laptop or your computer and it would also give enough charge to do that. And it plugs into the keyboard like so. Now the keyboard doesn't take a lot of power to use um, and it's basically, uh, it's completely reliant on how much you use it. So if, if you fully charged it, it would probably take only about an hour or so to fully charge. You'd expect to get at least a month's worth of use out of that, um, perhaps even longer. So you're only going to be charging that occasionally. You're not going to be charging it on a regular basis. But when you, if it, for any reason it does stop working when you're typing or intermittent keys come up, that means it needs to be charged. Now, I'm switching across to, to my iPad, which is slightly slightly different, but as soon as you don't have the folio case on there, but everything that we do from here will be the same as on the, the newer version, but we just don't have the keyboard installed. Um, so first of all, if we open it up, normally when you open up the folio uh, case, it will come up and, and with the home screen already. If it doesn't, or if it's blank like so, the power button is always at the top right-hand corner here. In fact, it's useful just to go through those You've got your headphone socket here, power button here. On the, on the right hand side, you've got volume controls here. And at the bottom is where we have the, the speakers and the plugging in. And then there's the home button, um, which is also a touch ID, which is at the bottom here. Now, if your iPad has been completely discharged or so you've not had it on for a while and you've plugged it in to recharge it and you need to switch it on for the first time, then you'd use the on button at the top here and you'd press and hold that for about three or four seconds until an apple appears in the middle of the, of the device. However, if it's just on standby like this is, it'll just come up with the home button. Now, when we switch it on, if you've set up Touch ID, it should just, when you put use the finger that you, or thumb that you've used for a Touch ID, it should just go straight into the home. If it doesn't, so for instance, if we close that down and I use a different finger, it will ask us for our, uh, our code to do that. So you, when we set it up in the office with you, you should have put your own pin code in there. So you just put your pin code in and away you go. But in this instance, I just use my Touch ID to get in. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get the iPad to work and mirror to the TVs. Now, the easiest way of doing that is if we've got the remote control, first of all, we'll just switch the TV on. Then we get the iPad and log in. And then I'll probably do a screen mirroring, mirroring of this part. But just so you've got a general idea, it's a swipe from the top corner here. Then we go to screen mirror. So what we'd do is we scroll down till we find the room number. So we're currently in SC2. It's in alphabetical order, although sometimes it doesn't always work that way. Now, this is really useful to see. It's asking us for a code. What we do is on the remote control, there is a source button. If we hit the source button and choose the Apple option, we come off there. Oh, 
it will give us that code. So now all we need to do is just type in that number, 9338. 9338. Okay. Oh, 5195. 5195. Okay, there we go. And it'll mirror to the iPad. If I turn it landscape, it will turn it that way and you'll get a much larger area here. That's really useful to, to know that if you're using it in landscape, it will use a greater part of the screen and will look far better. Now, if for any reason that didn't work, say when you try and, 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 and uh, connect to it, it doesn't work at all, what you'd need to do is reset the Apple TV. Now, Apple TV is a little box which is located behind here. But up here on the wall, or somewhere around the TV, you'll find these two plugs. The one that you need is this triangular one here that's flatter. It's much smaller than the one on next to it. That is the Apple TV. And all you do is you switch it off uh, for about... Um, so, let's try it. We switch it off. We wait 10 seconds. Then you switch it back on and that will reset the Apple TV. Then we simply just need to wait and you'll see the Apple TV come up again. And at that point, we would then need to go back to our iPad and we'd do the mirroring again. So we go to mirroring, find SC2. And it will come straight back in again. I do, I do love the fact that uh, I see too. Oh yeah, it's, it's stopped mirroring. There we go. So it's actually useful to see see how these things, how it, easy it is for it to to not work. Actually, you know, uh, and you do have to pursue it. If um, it comes up with a white screen, sometimes it'll come up with a white screen saying that the Apple TV has recently been updated. Um, that happens once a year, very occasionally, and it's triggered by uh, Apple doing some updates to the boxes. We have no control over that. When that happens, the only way to get past that part is to use the Apple TV remote. Because that's a controlled uh, device, because it allows you to do extra things inside the Apple TV unit, uh, we can't have that in the rooms because they're unique to each box. We keep those locked up in our cupboards, and if that happens, we need to come out and basically use that remote control to just get you past a couple of screens. In the last, um, since September, it hasn't happened at all. We haven't had to do that, but it will happen at some point. So don't worry about that, but you will need a technician to sort that out for you if that happens. Thank you. Now this might look a little bit strange, but what I'm gonna do is I'll show you how to pair your keyboard via Bluetooth if for any reason it stops it stops working or it loses the connection. Now in this instance I've got the nice new one over here but I'm going to pair this keyboard with my iPad so you get the general idea. What we do is we when we when it's charged we press the on button you get the green here and then we press and hold the Bluetooth button and you'll see this turns and flashes blue. Once that does that we go to settings on our iPad and we go to Bluetooth, and in Bluetooth it should find the keyboard. I hit the option for the keyboard, say pair, and now these two are linked. There we go. So now that's done, if I now go to um, maybe a word processor or uh, let's just put, a, a, yeah, let's go to Microsoft Word. So now I'm into a, a blank document. If I start uh, typing, since there we go and it types in so it should be working fine so on the LG remotes you'll see this button here and that is for source when we press that 
it will give us along the bottom of the screen all the different imports of sockets that are on the, the TV. So HDMI is um, high definition media input. I think that's what it's called, it means. And that's the main way that these things are connected. Now already you can see it's found that the Apple TV is plugged into this HDMI too. Sometimes it gets a bit confused and the way in which it, you can get around things is by skipping across to another channel, another socket, pressing enter. So you just go left, right and enter and then going back to the Apple. And sometimes that's all you need to do to then see this, which will show you the information. Uh, quick, it just flashes up on screen and it just tells you uh, that that's, that that's the, the, the Fox Apple network and that's the uh, Apple TV that's plugged into it. When, when you see this and the AirPlay is active, that means that it's ready for you to be able to use the iPad with it and mirror. Okay, and then of course when you're finished, use the red button to switch off the TV. There you go.